Hello everybody, today I'm going to be showing you the mod Constantine Rise of Christianity created by Dresden and no doubt a handful of other talented modders. Constantine Rise of Christianity is set in the year 311 AD where the Roman Empire is split up into four separate empires called the Tetrarchy. I think this mod originally began out as a mod called Tetrarchy Four Empires or something like that, but now it has evolved into something much bigger and it just recently got a massive update the last week uh, extending the battle system and the Roman roster. So I've chosen to play as Maxentius Augustus, but there are many other factions you can choose. You can choose Licinius, Maximus Dea Augustus or Constantine himself, the Christian faction of the Roman Empire. Uh, we also have some other factions that I don't think are quite finished yet, but that are un definitely under construction with some new units and placements and things like that. We have the Franks, the Goths, the Lombards. Uh, we also have Armenia, Sasanian Empire, the Huns, Kinda, uh, Picts, Garmatian Kingdom, and then the Pic. Oh, yeah, I said that Picts. So I have already picked the Maxentius Augustus just because he was the first one in the list. So we'll just dive into my campaign and I'll show you all the new features that's been added. Okay everybody, welcome to the campaign. I'm about 25 to 30 turns in at the moment. I'm playing as Max and T.S. Augustus, but before I go on with this, I'd like to just point out that I am running some extra mods on top of Constantine at the moment. I'm running the Greek campaign map by Adreus. You can see here it removes the region borders, which just makes provinces look just way more clean and just, just better in my opinion anyway. So check that out if you haven't heard of it before. It's excellent. It works with pretty much any other mod. I also have the better water running which adds reflections to the water, darkens the water to make it like more dark blue and uh, adds some better waves crashing against the rocks and things like that. Truly a fantastic little mod, it's been out since the early days of Rome too and I would always recommend having it on. <clears throat> I'm going to create a collection for all these so you can just click subscribe all and just get them hassle free so check the description for that, it'll say collection in big writing. So let's move on to what the mod has to actually offer. Now you may notice that Rome, Roman armies uh, cover like 70% I'd say of the whole European map at the moment. Whether it's the Constantine Rome, Maxentius Augustus or one of the other two, the map is littered with Romans because we're in 311 AD and that's the way it was at the time. But to break up you fighting constantly the same armies over and over again against the same armies and being extremely bored, boring, uh, you have these different uh, provinces that allow you to recruit different units. So as long as you build a field of Mars in any town pretty much, you'll have access to different troops depending on where you are. Now, if you upgrade that to a cohort barracks and things like that, you'll get your basic legionnaires that are available everywhere. But you'll also get extra units such as the Federati uh, for Gaul. An example here is the Federati Sagittarii. You can also get Federati uh, Equites and things like that. But these are Germanic archers. Uh, despite their reputation of their fearsome charge, Germanic archery could prove a su suitable challenge to Roman armies. So this is just one example of how my army is a little bit diversified now. I know it's only one unit, but in general the enemy has many of these units and mine are mostly uh, uh, kind of based from Italy, so that's why it's like that. They haven't been in Lugdunum too long. So this breaks up, this adds huge diversity to just fighting different Romans. Everybody seems to have a different type of army and it's really just refreshing to see especially I'm only 25 to 30 turns in as I say but uh, I haven't come across like the same army twice and that's really refreshing especially when we're just fighting Roman factions the whole time so it adds something a little bit different and just makes it a lot better I guess something that go kind of goes hand in hand with this is if the culture was all Roman everywhere that would be quite boring as well so the religion system has been thrown on top we of the culture system so uh, oops clicked the wrong thing there instead of culture is we have religion so my I have my imperial religion because I'm just imperialism you have my Roman gods but Constantine here is Christian so I'm trying to get rid of this predominantly Christian town at the moment um, by building different religious buildings and so on so that's a great way to break up kind of the culture system between basically what would be all Roman uh, factions at the, or towns at this point something else that is also a new addition is the new resources which are like uh, different things you can notice here we have gold uh, we have loads of different things. We have gold, copper, uh, grain, livestock, and fish, things like that. They all have big benefits on based on where their town is. So if I was to capture this town, I can't see it at the moment, but I'm sure gold would give me a massive wealth bonus. Just like in one of these towns down here, I have uh, grain, which gives me a big food bonus to that town. So it's quite interesting because this mod is 12 turns per year. So it might take a while to build. If you were stuck for uh, in a bad food situation and you needed to get some food quickly, taking a town would be a viable option 
of doing that if it was one that was a source of grain. So I feel like the resources have a little bit more importance in this campaign just because of the slowed down year rate uh, because it goes by one month a turn. Uh, so things like that are just like really uh, refreshing, kind of break up the campaign, break up the game from what you know it already because as you know the game has been out nearly a year so these kind of changes are refreshing. Uh, on top of that, some new buildings have been added. So we have down here a really excellent idea for a building and I think someone mentioned this early in the early days of Rome 2, uh, why there's no kind of military camp. So this is like a, it's like a, a meeting field military camp for your troops and what it does is if you have one of these in your town it'll reduce the cost of armies that are in that region it upgrades the security better public order you know but it consumes food and hampers growth because you know you're recruiting people and things like that it's a really nice uh, addition to uh, to the buildings and it's one I, I use in pretty much all my provinces because it you know it lowers your it basically it saves you money by having cheaper armies as long as they're on your bordering towns I guess you know and it looks fantastic. It looks like, you know, it fits in perfectly with all the other icons. So that's really professionally done and it's great quality work. Uh, so something that goes hand in hand with the 12 turns per year is the new traits system. So because you have generals a lot longer now, surviving a lot longer because of the 12 turns a year and agents, uh, the upgrades have been changed. Uh, so there's the traits, talents and toadies mod, some of you may note. So here we have a couple extra traits that have been created. Uh, maybe if we go down to the army here, the general has his different types of uh, he has different types of traits that he can make. So these are all new new ones, as far as I know, anyway. And they're they're quite they're really well named. I feel so we have here like the camp administrator. So a quick problem with Rome 2 is the fact that you don't know what you're going to upgrade into when you click something. It just says warrior, and you don't really know what you're going to get when you upgrade into that. At least you don't if it's your first few times playing. But this kind of resolves that problem by saying something, by giving you a good description. It says, Camp Administrator. A man with an eye for recruitment and connections can win skilled soldiers to his cause. Now, what actually that does, uh, if you get it, is if you think about it logically, like what would that do? Camp Administrator. It gets you better mercenaries and cheaper rates and things like that. So it's actually a really nice way of naming it. I mean, I guess it could tell you directly what you're going into, but I think in fitting with the game's style, that's a great way to approach it. Then it changes the color so you can see exactly which one it's come out of which again is really refreshing instead of just bungling, bu uh, bunching them all as red and kind of being confused at which ones are new and which aren't so that's just the trade stance toady system there is really excellent uh, just adds much more diversity to the armies and generals in the game uh, speaking of the generals actually I might as well show you Maxentius himself he has his own unique honor! unit model or just uh, character model here and he's represented in the battles as well so that's really interesting. I'm not sure if he can die or if he's just one of those characters that gets wounded all the time. But I'm pretty sure I killed Constantine in one of my early battles. A uh, really big battle. I think he's dead. I turned off my advisor so it's, it, I didn't hear if he was wounded or dead. But I'll find out soon enough I guess. But either way, it's a unique kind of character modeling. You can definitely recognize him on the battlefield and in the campaign map. So that's really cool to see uh, that each Roman army has one of those guys. Uh, the Emperor. Uh, lastly, we have some chapter missions. Oops, wrong thing again. We have some chapter missions. So, objectives. Uh, basically, you have your basic objectives. Uh, so, like, you get to... Y you have eight provinces. Currently, you have six. And if you do these two things at the same time, you get, like, extra awards. They're all laid out really well. If I own these provinces, if I click them, they all work. Everything's, like, really done with high quality and all is put in and made that made sure that's all working so that's again just really excellent to see so it's a proper fully fledged out campaign so i highly recommend it so yeah that's pretty much everything i know i haven't shown you much great footage but i hope i was able to get through it quick enough for you to understand so i'm just going to show you one of the battles here now i alluded to the fact that the battles are a little bit different in constantine they're running lines of battle a mod made by ahiga and gunny um from the total war center excellent mod as well it's uh, it's probably not to everybody's liking, but it has grown on me. I, I first thought battles were a little bit too slow, but it has grown on me. So I'm just going to fight this battle out. I won't do the whole thing, but I'll show you basically how the combat feels and what the uh, main changes are as soon as we're done with the loading screen. Okay, just before we begin the actual battle, I thought I'd take the time to show you some of the uh, really cool unit models that are used for basically the units in the game. Uh, so I mentioned before that we had the Federati Milites, uh, the different kind of Federati units that have been recruited from the Germania regions. Battle ready, battle ready, so you can hear that they have that cool Germanic voice to them. 
so you know exactly as soon as you click them that you're using these type this type of unit uh, let's just have a little zoom in there so we can see like very detailed very cool looking a lot of these guys look like older older gentlemen if I'll be honest but um they have the kind of the cool like helmets of the era chain mail the long swords it all looks like just absolutely fantastic now I don't know the exact names for all these different uh, pieces of gear so sorry to any of the history buffs that may be sh you know, screaming at me right now but um, they just they do look fantastic we also have the uh, standard bearer the eagle standard is the heart and soul of any legion and uh, we do in fact have the have the eagle there so that's quite cool that provides a morale boost for anybody that's uh, within these like little circles I guess um, so yeah so that's pretty much it I mean you know it's the same goes the, the level of quality is everywhere it's throughout these are all totally new units they're not in the base game at all and it goes for all the cavalry and everything like that. Also, I'd just like to show the uh, my Roman Emperor here. He is fighting. He is leading this battle today. So there we go. He looks like an absolute badass. He's got a shield on his back. He's got his little Carthaginian symbol and the elephants. That's interesting. Might be a reference to Hannibal of some sort. Or, I don't know. I don't know the history. But he's there. He also has his own like loyalty of the Emperor trait, which is pretty cool. I think it's the same as the Caesar and Gaul ones, just maybe renamed. But anyway... We'll get into the battle, I'll just skip around the place to show you the best bits, and uh, we'll move on from there. So while the men are busy fighting on the walls, I thought I'd take the time to explain a little bit about Lines of Battle and what my feelings are on it. So Lines of Battle slows down the fight um, between units. Apparently now I've been talking with the, one of the creators, which is Gunny. I host the Total War podcast with him, uh, the Total Warcast. And he says that attacking a unit from the front will slow down your units greatly. Um, will slow the fight down like there will be barely any change. But uh, once you attack them from the rear and... Uh, morale starts to drop you know they will fold and break quite quickly now this is probably more realistic in terms of what would happen at the time and things like that but from a gameplay perspective I do feel that it might be a tad just a tad too slow um, I, I, I've gr it has grown on me there quite a lot originally I thought like oh no it's way too slow it's kind of boring just watching units do nothing but you learn about the intricacies of how to actually fight these battles then uh, how like flanks and things like that are extremely important I'll just order these guys to take down that. Um, so once you get kind of used to it, you know, it actually does become really rewarding when you win a battle in lines of battle. I have had some extremely close fights and it's just been really, really enjoyable. Like, it's just really enjoyable. You have a great, much, I feel much more, uh, a much greater sense of accomplishment when you actually win a battle. Uh, for this reason, like, things like uh, missiles are actually really more powerful in the game. Something we've noticed. I don't know if this will be changed or not, but, um, Flanking with missiles is almost more important than flanking with cavalry. If you can get your spearmen behind, like your uh, javelin men behind a unit, you can decimate them from behind. That's something that's uh, that we use quite a lot. So I'm after taking a section of the wall here pretty quickly, I might add, because they were just missile units. So my uh, Federati and my, um, what are these guys called? Cohorts Palatinia, they tore through them. But there's a much slower fight here going on where it's Cohorts Palatinia versus Cohorts Palatinia. So that's just... That is going to chug along for a long time. So what would be ideal would be if I got my missiles along down the bottom here, or along here maybe, and just like fired up on them. That would like take them down quite quickly. Uh, so that's basically the basics of lines of battle, I guess, in a nutshell. It slows down your fight from the front, but from the rear, you know, you'll do a lot more damage. So it encourages flanking and you know missile use and things like that to really break the back of your enemy rather than actually kill everybody 
which I, I, have, I do enjoy. Like, if I was to have this mod with or without Lands of Battle, I'd definitely have it with it. Um, let's see what else we got. So we have all these new unit icons that I didn't mention. These are created in-house by Dresden and the team themselves. Uh, it's not by Normal or Bull God, but I think it takes inspiration from those guys. It looks fantastic. After a while, I, I got used to it because I was at first a little bit daunted. I didn't know any of these units' names, but the, w combined with the awesome descriptions that really just tell you everything you need to know, and then also the um, the really distinct art style to each one, you, you become familiar with it very, very quickly. So that's basically Constantine and Rise of Christianity in a nutshell. Um, I don't really have anything more to show. There are all the other factions that you can have a look at, but this is kind of my Roman preview. Um, this is all new stuff. All these new units have just been added quite recently. Uh, so I just highly recommend it. I highly recommend checking it out. And if you haven't played, haven't played it before, like you just you absolutely have to. Um, it's just it's an excellent mod, and I can't wait to see. Um, it being built upon even further with the kind of more barbarian tribes and the Goths, the Franks and things like that. I'm really looking forward to playing as them as well. So that's pretty much for me. I know this has been a very long and rambly video, but there was so much to cover. I just decided to hit record and just wing it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. The reason I can't show you any really cool battles is because the replays aren't working at the moment. Uh, so I just have to kind of deal with that and just show you what I got. Um, so yeah, anyway. Check it out. It's in the link, in, or the, the link for it is in the description. And remember to check out my collection that has all the stuff together if you just want to have exactly what I have. Uh, I have some better blood mods on and arcade effect removal, things like that. So that's it. I might cover this mod a little bit later and get some battles going in it uh, when the replays start working again. But until now, you should just definitely play it if it's a really enjoyable campaign. Alright guys, that's all for me and I'll see you in the next one.